We're now on problem number seven. Problem number seven says x equals one half, or if equals x equals one half, what is the value of one over x plus one over x minus one? So one over x, well that's just one over one half, plus one over what's x minus one? What's one half minus one? What's well, minus one half, right? So this is x minus one is minus one half. And this looks, I mean, you could evaluate it, or you could immediately see that these would cancel out, because we could take this minus and put it right here and make this a plus. Or you could evaluate it and say, well, this is equal to 2, minus 2, and that equals 0. So this is just kind of a speed question to see how fast you can do it. How much time do you waste on this? <laughs> OK, problem number 8. I'll do it in green. Let's see, let me draw that. So we've got a coordinate axes. Oh my god. Edit un undo. It's coordinate axes. I didn't have my line tool on. And then that's the x axis. This is the y axis. Then right, let me draw some points here. I have the point right here. They say this is one comma zero. The x-axis. That's the y-axis. And then still use the line tool. They have this go straight up like this. Goes like that. Right angle there. Right angle there. This is point S. This is point. T, this is point R. They say the figure above, RS, RS is equal to ST. So RS is equal to ST. That's why I'm saying that their lengths are equal. And the coordinates of S, the coordinate of S right here, is K comma 3. K comma 3. So what does that tell us? That means that the X value right here, this point right here is K. And that this y value right here is three, right? K comma three. That's not t three. That's I'm just saying the y value right here is three. What is the value of k? Well, we know that this length and this length are the same, right? So we know that what what, what is this length? What is this length? <laughs> that has a very ugly curly bracket. But we know that the y value, we know the y value here is 3, right? This intersects the y intercept at 3 right here. So this, we know that distance is 3. We know that this distance is 3. That's also 3. And we also know that this is equal to this. So we also know that this distance is 3. And if that distance is 3, we know this distance is 3. But we're 3 to the left. We're, we're 3 to the left of the y axis, right? Where we've gone 3 units in the negative direction. So the value of k, or the x coordinate here, would be negative 3, because we went 3 to the left. If it was out here, it would be positive 3. But since here, it's negative 3. And that's choice A. Next question, number 9. Number 9. OK, so they draw, let's see, they say, so they drew a table. And I'll just, well, I'll, I'll, I'll write it the way they did it. So they did x and f of x. And then they say 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 5, 10. The table above give the val gives the values of the quadratic function f for the selected values of x. Which of the following defines f? So it's a quadratic function, so we know it's going to you know, have the form you know, f of x is going to be something like x squared. Well, it could be ax squared plus bx plus c. My suspicion, though, is it's going to be something fairly simple. Um, so let's see. You know, I, the way I would do it, I would play around with it. So if I squared this x value, right, and I still end up with a one, and this is actually the biggest clue right here, because when x is zero, f of x is one. So we know that this constant term is going to be 1. It's going to be something plus 1. Because when x is 0, these things are equal to 0, this ax squared plus bx. And we still have it equal to 1. So we know c is 1. So we know that already that it's ax squared plus bx plus 1. 
And then let's see. We know that we have a plus one here, right? So we, we know this this whole term is gonna you know you put it you could put it in here, but you, when you get a plus one, well I'm I'm explaining it in a very confusing way, but your your brain might just say, hey, if I square this and add this plus one, I get two. If I square this and I add one, I get five. If I square three and I add one, I get ten. And you would so they say, well uh, f of x is must just must just equal x squared plus one. If your brain doesn't just stumble on that, although it should, you should probably just say, well, it's probably something simple, like I squared and I add one or subtract one, because they're never going to give you something really complicated. But if they did, or if, I guess if you're not doing this in, on the SAT, hopefully you see how I immediately got that the y-intercept is 1, because when x is 0, f of x is 1. And then you could have said, well, when x is 1, f of x is 2. So you could have substituted it here. You could have said 2 is equal to a x a one sorry you could say 2 is equal to a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus 1 right and then cuz i just substituted 1 for x and then i put f of x is equal to 2 and then you would get if you subtract 1 from both sides you get 1 is equal to a plus b all right and one, I mean, you know, on the SAT, they're not going to give some crazy fractional thing, and I'm, I'm actually hesitant to even go in this whole direction because I think it's just overcomplicating the thing. Because you could then do the same thing with two and five, and then get a system of equations, et cetera, et cetera, and you would have wasted a lot of time. The big discovery here is that most things in the SAT are going to be a really simple equation, and frankly, more than doing this, since it's multiple choice, I just realized you could just try out the equations that they give you, and it's lucky that the first one works. Actually, you should just try out all of them and see which ones work. Next problem. Write me a message if you found that last ex explanation a little confusing. I just didn't want to show you kind of the correct way to do it, because that would take you forever, and it's not really the correct way to do it on the SAT. Problem number 10. How old was a person exactly one year ago if exactly x years ago the person was y years old? So this is just something to confuse you. So let's say the person, so x years ago the person was y years old. So let's let's put it this way. Let's so let's say with um, let me say that when it's so x x years ago so. When x is, let me let me think of the best way to write this. So let's write their current age. Let's write their current age is equal. Well, let's just write it is equal to a. So we know a couple of things. We 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 know that a minus x is equal to y, or we know that their current age is equal to x plus y, right? This is their current age. And what do we want to figure out? We want to figure out their age one year ago. So we want to figure out their current age minus 1. So the current age minus 1, well, the current age is x plus y. So you just substitute that back in, and you get x plus y minus 1 is, their, is, is how old they were one year ago. So x plus y minus 1, that's choice E. Next problem. Actually, I only have a minute left. So I'll do the next problem in the